Hallelujah. <laughs> Your laughter shall be full. In the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. We are on the journey. This is the 26th day of our 70 day fasting and prayer. Wow. That is the third section. We are in the third section now. On the third section, uh, the sixth part of it. Wonderful. And I pray that if you have not joined us, you better join us. There is no substitute for prayer and fasting and then study of the word of God. Prayer fasting helps us to become the best we can be in our generation. Prayer, fasting and the study of the word releases the authentic you. The real you releases the Israel in your Jacob to come alive. Makes you relevant in your time and generation. It mortifies the flesh, crucifies the flesh which is man's greatest enemy and allow the spirit of God within you to come alive. In the matchless name of Jesus, receive the grace to pray, receive the grace to fast, receive the grace to study the word. In fasting, your health springs speedily. In fasting, the light of God shines forth to you. Fasting has a way of bringing the best out of you. In the matchless name of Jesus, receive the grace to fast, to pray, and to study the word of God. And we're still on our journey. This is the third part of generational record breakups. In every generation, there are record breakups. You don't just wish it, you do it. You don't just hear it, you do it. That is what the Bible says, Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, 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 Theophilus, he says, you excellent Theophilus. That is Dr. Luke testifying. He said, this is an account, valid account, of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, of what he began, of what he began to teach and to do, to do and to teach. The doing is important. The living out is important. That's what makes you a generational record breaker. It is not just in hearing. James said it's not just in hearing, but being the doers of the work. That's the way it works. John chapter 2, verse 5. He said, whatsoever he says to you, do it. So don't run around just hearing revelations and revelations and insights. And you are not applying anyone. When you apply it, it shows in your life. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray you will be a generational record breaker. That your journey on earth shall not be in vain. God sent us here. To, he sent us here. From obscurity we enter to limelight. From insignificance we enter to significance. That's the way it works. But you have to get the truth, the secret things that makes men men. Everything that makes anyone great is secret. And here, in the stories of men, you decipher, you distill, you bring out their secrets. That's the way it works. I'm a student of biographies. And then, I know that by the time I read through biographies, I get something there to add value to my own life. Something they did and brought out something that benefited their generation and our generation. I pray that you'll understand this. And understand this, we have, uh, we'll be talking now that you want to be a generational record breaker. That you must know what it means to be dedicated to God and his kingdom and his work. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. You are not the one seeking the all other things. You are not the one seeking the mundane things of the earth. You are not the one seeking all the wayfarers of the earth. You are not the one seeking the benefits of the earth. You are not the one seeking the welfare of the earth. But you are the one seeking God. And God naturally ushers you into those things worthlessly. That is the way it comes. You need to first get born again into the kingdom. The kingdom of light and leave the kingdom of darkness. And when you're in the kingdom of light, you now begin to learn. Take the calculated destiny steps. Any learner is a leader. You begin to learn. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 2 verse 5 says that we increase in learning. He said the wise increase in learning. Some people just increase in knowledge they don't apply. You need to become a learner. A 
learn now. You need to be humble to learn. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He said, Come unto me, you who are heavily laden, you who are carrying volute, and I will give you rest. How do I give you the rest? Verse 29. He said, Come and learn of me. Be humble. He said, With meekness, come and learn of me. And I will teach you. You will find rest. That is what is happening. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. He said, Follow me, and I will make you. So the making in the kingdom is for followers of Jesus. That's the way it works. If you don't follow, you are not met. Your making stops where you stop following. So you follow. You need to be an addicted follower of Jesus. You need to be committed to Jesus and committed to his endeavors. And his endeavors are all the spheres of life. Wherever you find your vocation, and then you are committed to it according to the will of God, then you are good to go. That's the way it works. And if you understand this in simple terms, you will be making great on earth. You will be enrolling yourself in the register of generational record breakers. Those who break the records in every generation, they become very outstanding. They stand out in their phase of life. They stand out in their different vocations. They stand out in their endeavors. That's the way it works. They go from obscurity to the limelight, from insignificance to significance. That's the way it works. But it, start, it starts first with personal discipline. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, he said, what you do in secret, God says, I will reward you openly. So there is a secret time. There is a time that you enter the secret. John chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It has to die first. He said, if not yet, it abides alone. That's the way it works. But when it dies, when it is deadly committed, that's commi de dedication means deadly commitment. When it dies, when it is sold out, then it comes up, becomes a tree, and will have many more fruits. Hallelujah. The size of a seed does not determine the size of the tree. And get this clear, sir. Trees or th seeds are in varying values and profits. The seeds are not the same in value. They are not the same in profit. That's why you have cash crops. That's why you have subsistence crops. Every tree, every seed has a value. Every seed has its profit level. So seeds are not the same. They are in level. And understand this again. The, one of the greatest laws governing the earth is seed time and harvest. That is Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Seed time and harvest. You have seed time. Then once you have the seed time, there will be a harvest time. The time the seed is sown. So you can have a seed. Your money is a seed. Love you give is a seed. Your time is a seed. Whatever you do is a seed. Good or bad is a seed. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8. He says that whatever good you do, God will recompense the same unto you. So it is your choice to sow the seed. But the greatest seed that have the utmost value in life is you, your life. You don't have a double life. You just have one life to live. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the mention of the Savior, the mention of the Messiah, the first mention, he said the seed of the woman shall bruise your seed. That is the seed of the woman, Jesus. So it's mentioned as a seed. And John chapter 3 verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave, he sowed his seed, the only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He sowed the seed, he sowed Jesus. James chapter 5 verse 6 says, The husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth. He waited because he has sown his seed. So he's waiting. Me, I'm among the seed because I've given my life to Christ. And you, that has given your life to Christ, you're among the seed, the precious seed that is waiting. He sowed one seed, but he's getting multiples. That is the way it works. If you can sow your life in him, you will see, you will get multiples more. Sow your life in winning souls. Sow your life in furthering the gospel. Sow your life in furthering humanity. Sow your life in helping humanity. Sow your life in inventions. 
that are godly. So your life in any in great things, but make sure that it is under the ambience of God. Then you are good to go. Then you are, you will definitely become a generational record breaker. That is the way it works, and I want you to realize that money is a seed. That's why Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six says, "He that sows sparingly reaps sparingly." Time is a seed, but your life is the greatest seed. In Psalm one hundred and twenty-six. Psalm 126, verse 1. Look at what the scripture says. Wonderful. Sweet, 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 sweet. Very sweet. Psalm 126, verse 1. It says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we shall we are glad. Verse 4. Turn again the captivity. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. There is seed time, there is harvest. Now he says, He that go wait for to understand this. Seed time is not always a joyful time. It's a time of pain, but the gain will come. It's a time of labor, but the gain will come. Our labor in the Lord is never in vain. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Be unmovable. Don't allow anything to shake you. For your labor in the Lord shall never be in vain. Now look at this. He now says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, Shall that let's come again? What is that precious seed? There are levels of seed. The precious seed is your life. That is the most precious seed on earth. He said, Shall that let's come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Hallelujah. When you sow your seed, you can never, you can never be alone. Look at Psalm chapter 22, verse 30. Look at what he says. He said, A seed shall serve him a seed shall serve him who is that seed can you serve god today that is what dedication means serving god is not a calling it's not a gift it's not a talent serving god is a choice yes joshua chapter 24 verse 15 he said choose you this day whom you will serve you decide to serve other gods but I and my family this day, we have made our choice to serve the Lord. Serving God is a choice. And serving God doggedly without looking back is what commitment means. Is what addiction means. Is what commitment, dedication means in the kingdom of God. You serve Him without looking back. Unshakable, unwavering, deadly commitment. That is what it means. He says... What, what happens to that person? A seed shall serve him. What happens? And he shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. A generational record breaker. Once you can soak yourself in serving God, what counts of you is a generation. A generational record breaker. You will be outstanding. You will affect and impact generations. Several lives. Our example today is Daniel. Understand this. And remember, no tree is bigger, no seed is bigger than the tree. Daniel is our example today. What did Daniel do? From day one, Daniel showed forth his commitment. He was a captive boy, a young boy, captured by the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon selected a few of them to serve him. And he was brought in the courts of the king to serve the king. And he was meant to eat the food the king ate, uh, the, 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 whatever the king drank. But the Bible said he showed forth his commitment to God. He sided with God and not with the mundanes of the world. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 said, Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat. Neither will he defile himself with what the king drank. And that is it. And uh, look at it. Then what happened to Daniel? Look at the, the different aspects. 
then they had to take a stand with God. Again, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 10, you see that all the kings, all the, the, the kings, the governors, the princes gathered together against him. It doesn't matter who gathers together against you. Listen, lie is lie. It doesn't matter how many people who are telling it. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter how many people who are doing it. Right is right. It doesn't matter if you are the only one that is doing it. Truth is truth. It doesn't matter if you are the only one. Just keep at it. That is the one thing that all are doing it does not mean that it is right. Look at all these old people gathered against Daniel. But Daniel stood out. They said, hey, Daniel, you must, we must deal with you. And they said, we cannot find anything against Daniel except by his commitment to his God. He's deadly committed to his God. And they now put up the calf. I say, who does not worship the calf shall be thrown into the lion's den. They say, king, that is what we want. And that was what happened. But Daniel survived it. He watch out what happened. They put him in the lion's den. God came out for him. Once you side with God, God will always side with you. That's the way it works. One with God is majority. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can one walk uh, he said, can two work together except they be agreed? Understand this. God, the result, God promoted Daniel in chapter 6. Daniel, there were uh, several princes uh, in the land, several governors in the land, and only three presidents. Among the three presidents, Daniel was the only preferred. The king even wanted to make him the head of the realm before they came up with this plot. Daniel received secrets from the Lord. That is what happens with God. He has a way of rewarding. He is a rewarder. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 of them who diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10, God is not unrighteous not to reward your labor of love in the kingdom. God is a rewarder. And Daniel chapter 2 verse 19, God revealed his secrets to Daniel in the night vision. And Daniel declared that the secret, that is deep and secret things in God. And that marks people at he became a generational record breaker. And I pray today that the same will happen to you. Today is your turning point. You need to make up your mind to change. Repent. Repent and ask God to help you. Now we are going to our prayers. Our prayers, we are going to our prayers with our 70 day prayer and fasting program. I want you to realize that you can plant your life in smallness, but it's, it will come out in greatness. You can plant your life in obscurity, but it will come out in the limelight. If your life is planted in God, it comes out in place. Daily commitment is what dedication is all about. It is getting sold out to God, giving your entire life to God, making yourself a seed to God. That is the way it works. It shall always serve him, and that seed shall come out as a general uh, record breaker. You must be sold out to serving God and turning out as a generational impactful person. That's the way it works. And I want to let you know that the highway to distinction is the highway or the path of dedication. Sow yourself to God in dedication and your life will turn out in distinction. That's the way it works. Dedication is a separate art form for the rise of giants. And those seeds are in varying degrees, value and profit. Your life is the greatest seed you can give to God. Seeds, the nature of seed is different and in varying degrees. I want us to pray this first prayer. I want us to pray now. Say, powers seeking for my glory, for demonic fame, die in the name of Jesus. Every power seeking for my glory, for demonic fame, die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name, powers confronting my destiny with battles. Oh God, judge them quickly. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray like this. Say, Oh Lord, let your raging fire destroy those dancing to kill me. In the name of Jesus, Oh Lord, let your raging fire destroy those dancing to kill me. In Jesus' march, let them pray. Every problem that will make me live with bad stories for the rest of my life, die in the name of Jesus. Every problem that will make me live with bad stories for the rest of my life. Die in the name of Jesus. I want you to decree today, say every battle of no escape for you. Oh God, 
that are delivered weekly in the name of Jesus. Every battle that they say there is no escape for you, oh God, deliver me from such. In Jesus' matchless name, I pray for you today. Powers announcing your death while you're still alive. I command them to be wasted. I destroy every obituary in the realm of the spirit concerning you and everything written in the realm of the spirit concerning us that is against our destiny. I cancel them today. And you that have been having this dream, 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 and you had one just yesterday night, that dream is so confusing to you and it's a bad dream. I can't see the consequences of that dream over your life. And all that you lost in that dream, I recover them for you. And you had a dream where you were eating. And uh, eating all that they brought, you were, you were eating them. And it's causing spiritual lukewarmness to you now. I command whatever evil you have eaten, to, I command them to be punched out of your system now. In the name of Jesus. And I pray today that everybody of darkness wearing your garment of glory, I command them to and dry up by the name of Jesus. Powers that say they will never give up on you. All the evil powers that say they will never give up on you. I decree today that they shall be wasted in the name of Jesus. A problem that is heavier than your destiny. I terminate them today. Let them be terminated forever. I command all demonic serpents sitting on your, on your throne to catch fire in the name of Jesus and anyone using charms to enjoy all that you are supposed to enjoy I command that evil exchange to be reversed in the name of Jesus anyone monitoring your prayers and snatching your testimonies from you I command them to run mad and die in the name of Jesus and anyone stealing your joy and making you cry and laughing at you I command them to die in disgrace in the name of Jesus and any man, any woman that has gone to make a covenant with the party in your name. I break that covenant and I decree that you shall not beg them for ever. They shall run mad and die in the name of Jesus. I decree today that the lion of darkness that consumed those I decree that the lion of darkness has consumed those that are set against you in the name of Jesus. I agree today that anyone assigned to steal from you shall run mad and die in the name of Jesus. I decree today that wicked powers hiding through evil to you. They are hiding to do evil to you. Ah, hey, hey, for you to see evil. Both you and your evil works, wherever they are, both them and their evil works shall be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. I see the powers pardon you with different gifts of poverty. In the name of Jesus, I release you from evil acts in the name of Jesus. Every load of struggle and disappointment looking like blessings to you, I command such loads to be consumed. Say every load of struggle and disappointment looking like blessings to me be consumed in the name of jesus every load of struggle and disappointment looking like bless to us i command you to clear away from us clear away from our family lines clear away from the body of christ clear away from this time and generation in the name of jesus the power manipulating the dead to carry to cry against you for you demand them to cry to in the name of jesus every storm and battles built up against you. I command them to catch fire, catch fire, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Say, storehouses of tears and battles built up against me or that you against me and my loved ones. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. I decree today dark powers are assigned to destroy your name with them shall die in the name of Jesus. Powers are assigned to make evil your portion. I command them to run mad and die in the name of Jesus. Powers using the garment of the dead to kill your destiny. I command them to run mad and die in the name of Jesus. Powers are assigned to give strangers your glory to use. I command them to mad and die in the name of Jesus. Every mouth singing the song of what a pity for you shall sing a new song of congratulations for you in the name of Jesus. Regata prabashoto sopreketesa gadaria. 
Ropo Shekete Pramahanto Ribradeya. You that have had those evil dreams, tormenting dreams, I deliver you from the consequences of such dreams. Whatever you lost from such dreams, I recover them for you today. I recover your wasted years and I cancel every evil dream you have had or anyone has had concerning you from wasting. In the name of Jesus, you shall make it on planet Earth. Your destiny cannot be wasted. Your health cannot be wasted. Your resources can never be wasted. Your your relational activities that are good and perfect can be wasted in the name of Jesus. Remember, it is loving God, loving people, touching lives positively and serving our God. I am fresh fire. We are visionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with God's love and God's presence, preparing humanity for eternity in God. Thank you. Are you worshipping with us for the first time? Congratulations! You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence, and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.